Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to do the payback period method and the discounted payback when we're evaluating projects to invest in. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial literacy. So let's say we have a problem. Here I wrote out the problem and so we can kind of see what's going on and I've, I've shown the answer, but I want to do it step by step. So let's say we want to calculate the payback period and the discounted payback period for the project and the cost is $300,000 and is expected to generate $85,000 cash flow per year for five years. And the firm's required rate of re uh, return, required rate is 11%. Should we accept the project? Well, so I just put it in a format here and I've copied this over. So let me show you how I would work this. So year zero, we have $300,000, that's gonna be a negative because that's a cash outflow, and we've got five straight years of cash inflows. So you can see we've that adds up to be like 425,000. So we should have a, a um, less than five year payback. Looks like we do. So let's calculate and show you how we would do this. So all I've done is just set up a little table. And so on the balance, we're trying to figure out how long does it take to recoup the cost of the original 300,000? Well. 85 plus 85 is going to be, you know, 170 plus 85 more is like 255. So let's calculate it and we'll come up to an answer and figure out how many years. The answer will be in years. So we're going to start with 300,000. The balance will be 300,000 after time period zero, after we make that investment. Then I'll take the 300,000. I'm going to add the 85 since it's a positive and negative. Um, it'll go down to 215. So we've recouped 85,000 of our cost of a 300,000 and we're going to do the same thing. I'll do one more then I'll copy it down 215 plus the 85,000 and we'll keep copying all the way down all the way through year five. So we recouped our cost after year three and during year four. So the way we can do this is we can say, okay, so we did this in year three. So we'll start with year three plus now I need um, 45 out of the 85. So what you know fraction would that be or what decimal would that be? So I'm going to put a negative because this is already a negative number. So I'm trying to change the sign to positive. Divided by the 85,000 in year four. So 45 divided by 85 is going to be a little bit more than 0.5. So looks like the answer is 3.5 years is our payback period. Okay, so what happens is you're saying, well, look, we'll, if we make this investment, we'll recoup our money in about three and a half years. So that's how it works. So should we accept this? Then we would just say, yes, we would accept this because it's less than five years. And apparently that's our standard here on this problem. We want to make sure we recoup our money within the first five years. Okay, so that's how you do the payback uh, method. Now, one quick way would be if the cash flows are equal, then you could just simply say, well, I'm going to take the 300,000, make it uh, negative 300,000. So negative, negative makes it positive, divided by 85,000. That's the same amount every year, and you should get 3.53. Now, if the cash flows are equal, three and a half years is the answer. So yes, we'll accept this. So what if we have payback? If we have two different projects and they have different numbers, and how are we going to calculate this? So let me set this up for you. So here, let's say we have equal years. We have uh, equal for six years. We have project A that costs $500,000, but it returns $105,000 every year for six years. So let's figure out the balance real quickly, $500,000, and then $500,000, um, and we're going to reduce that by one hundred five, and we'll go all the way down. So what is our payback? Well, since it's just equal every year, we could just do the 500 divided by the 105. So I'm gonna put minus 500 divided by the 105. And we get 4.76 years. We can certainly do it here. We can say, hey, it's four years um, plus the uh, negative 80 makes that positive, divided by the 105, we should get 4.76. Well, for project B, we say it's gonna be 700,000 as our cost, 
and then we'll take 700,000, add the 140. So we're slowly getting rid of the, um, the cost of that over time. We're paying it back is, is what I, how I should say it. And so this happened in year five, after year five into year six. So we'll say year five plus a minus 50,000 divided by the 115. So it took us 5.43 years, about five and a half years versus uh, about four and three quarters years. So which one will we accept? We would accept A or B. So here we would accept, we would accept project A and we would not accept or reject project B because based on payback, uh, you make uh, a shorter payback is more important. So let's do a summary of payback before we do the discounted payback. So the payback period, typically less years to payback is better, like you saw in the example of A and B. And so the advantages of the payback period, it's easy to calculate. It's easy to explain and understand. You can, you can share it with somebody and say, well, it takes us about four and a half years to recoup our, our money. Um, it's easy to understand, easy to explain. It's also cash. So some methods uh, would use uh, things like income, and this is a cash basis method, so the cash in versus the cash out. So that's important. Now there's some big disadvantages with payback period. Number one, it ignores time value of money. Now one of the basic things in finance, we know that that uh, dollar today is worth more than in the future. It takes all those dollars over four or five or six years and assumes they're all equal. So that's one of the real big problems with the payback period. And that's why we have the discounted payback. We'll show that in just a second, how we're trying to solve that as a, a problem that the payback period has. Another problem with the payback period is it ignores any cash flows after the payback period. Let's say you, you recoup your money in three years. Well, then years four and five and six are just ignored. We don't really have a way to handle that. So one of the challenges is it ignores any cash flows after payback. Number three is not all paybacks are equal. You could have uh, cash flows that are growing or going or decreasing or whatever, but if they have the same number, then you think, well, I don't have a way to, to pick between those two. The fourth disadvantage, and this is, um, I'm pointing to other methods. There are better methods and you wanna use a combination of methods Payback is fine, but you don't want to use it. Uh, it's not sufficient. So what you want to use is uh, include in your calculations net present value or NPV method or the internal rate of return or the IRR method. And you probably want to use both of those plus payback. So let's show you a discounted payback and we'll finish this problem. So go, let's go back to our original problem. We have $300,000 costs and $80,000 every year and then here we need to go back and look at this 11% required rate. We didn't need it for the payback method. Remember, that's the problem with the payback method. We do need it for the discounted payback method. So here's what we're going to do. We'll start with cash flows, and I'm going to get rid of all this. So we need to add a column. We have year and cash flow and balance, but in the middle here, we're going to add the present value of the cash flow. Well, since it's time period zero, we know that the cash flow is just going to be 300,000, the present value of that. So what we need to do on years one through five, 85,000 is one year away. This 85 is two years away, three years, four years, five years away. So what we need to do is calculate the present value. So I'm going to use my formula builder here and I'm going to hit the FX here. I'm going to search for PV present value. So you can kind of see how it's going here. So my rate is gonna be 11%. I'm gonna make that absolute with dollar signs and anchor that as I copy it down. The number of periods is gonna be one in this case. There's no payment going on, no stream of payment. So I'm gonna type in zero. The future value is 85,000. We're gonna get 85,000 at the end of the period. So we got to bring it back one period. And here, the end of the period is gonna be zero, so the payments happen at the end of the period. So this 85,000, now it's gonna be negative, so I'm gonna force that to be positive. I'm just gonna change that sign, negative present value. So 
I want that number to be positive here. So I've got 76,577. So uh, if you have 85,000 a year in the future and it's, the discount rate is 11%, it's worth 76,577 today. So let's copy this all the way down. So this is five years out, this 85,000 is worth 50,443 today. So we're gonna run our balance just like we did before. Start with the 300,000. We'll take the 300,000 plus the 76, the present value of the cash flow is not the original cash flow of 85,000. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you that one more time. The 223 plus the 68. Do you see with the present value uh, of the dollars, the discounted cash flow, those dollars are worth less in the future. So this is more realistic. So let's copy this down. And so over the five years into the, uh, four years into the sixth year, fifth year rather, four years into the fifth year, we have uh, paid back. So let's calculate what the payback is. So it's gonna be four full years plus, I'm gonna do a negative 36 divided by the 50,000. So it's 4.72 is the payback if we use the discounted payback period. Let's go back to our original. The answer was 3.53 if we used only the cash flows, the non-discounted cash flows, but the discounted payback would try to solve some problems on the payback period where you have now discounted cash flows rather than the undiscounted cash flows. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.